Hi, welcome to Crime Castle. My name is Sarai. Uh, so I have a podcast. It's the same name, Crime Castle. And basically, it's a true crime podcast that I have. I like to not only talk about murders or, um, you know, violent things like that, but I also like to discuss other things um, all centered around true crime, um, in my opinion. Some of them might be a little loosely true crime, but anyway, you could go ahead and look at my backlog if you're curious. Um, but this would be my first video, um, because I haven't done like any videos, um, for my podcast yet. Uh, eventually, maybe I could figure out how to do that simultaneously so it's not double the work. But I did decide, I, you know, I think I want to share some of these things, uh, visually. So, so here we are. So, um, today I'm going to talk about Elizabeth Bathory, who I find to be very interesting. The more I dug into this, um, case, I guess you would call it, uh, the more I think I realized it's basically all a ploy, I think. And it's very sexist, I think. And, uh... Well, I think you guys can make up your own mind as to what you think about it, but but yeah, so let's get started. So um, I do have like, you know, notes I'm going to read from because it's a lot of information. I can't retain all of it. And plus, I did this episode a while back, so I don't remember everything. But anyway, so um, oh, and uh, it's going to be a little difficult because it is visual. I do list my sources and everything in my show notes on my podcast um because a lot of this uh of course is you have to research it you have to um pull from different places to find information and things and some of it might not be my words exactly it might be copied and pasted from somewhere so uh i'm not claiming like all of this came from me um I just, so i will list i'll figure out i'm sure there's like a place for me to list my sources here as well um, so anyway, so Elizabeth Bathory, so we're talking royalty, we're talking 1560. Uh, so she was a countess, Countess Elizabeth Bathory. She was born in 1560. She was born into a family in, uh, high society ruling over Transylvania, um, which is an independent principality within the kingdom of Hungary. So her family, like I said, they were of high society. So they had like kings and cardinals, knights, judges. And so, um, so it, so I wrote down here that I'm one of the sources I found that it is reported that one of her uncles instructed her in Satanism and, uh, that her aunt taught her all about sadomasochism. But, um, you know, we don't know how um how true that is but it was stated in an article so i thought i'd put it in here um at age 10 elizabeth was engaged to count uh frenick i think it's frenick i'm not sure how to pronounce it uh nasa D, and he was a member of the nasa D family um so this was a political arrangement so at that time most marriages were that way um it was all political all the marriages you know they would have one person uh, from one country marry somebody else from another country and that would signify that they would be at peace and whatever whatever came in the deal it was basically a deal contract a a um a negotiation a you know you were buying whatever was part of the contract so Anyway, so it was a political arrangement. Um, the funny thing is, in this case, Elizabeth's like social standing was higher than that of uh, Fernick, Ferenick, Ferenick, I think. Um, so anyway, so I thought this was pretty cool. So she was of higher status, so she refused to take his last name, um, which I thought is pretty badass because it's the fifteen hundreds, like. People nowadays don't even do that. People will get married and the women will still, they still, even though like now there's a lot of hyphenated names, it's still like a practice where you take your husband's name. So I thought it was pretty badass of her to not do that. Um, so anyway, 
so um so anyway so they were engaged right but it's reported that while they were engaged she became pregnant from a baby or pregnant with a baby of course from um a, a lover and this lover was of lower standing so it's all of this is gonna i'm gonna say it's hearsay because it's from the 1500s and i don't know how you know these articles got their information exactly you know or how reliable all of this is but here we go it said that uh Fernick had the man the lover castrated and torn to pieces by dogs very a la what is it game of thrones um but anyway so she did eventually give birth to a daughter and apparently the daughter was hidden away um so on may in 1575 elizabeth and Ferenick married elizabeth was just 14 years old at the time but then i saw some articles that said that she was 15 so i'm not sure exactly how old she was but either way uh baby that's a baby that's a baby and she already had a baby that's crazy if she was 14 15 um that's insane <laughs> i'm sick i'm sorry okay so his wedding gift to elizabeth was his household which was a castle i cannot pronounce this uh of c-s-e-j-t-e -E -E. i don't know how to pronounce that <laughs> um in little carpathians which is near present day nove mesto nad voham and Trisin, slovakia the castle was brought uh it was bought by his mother in 1569 and given to him and then he transferred it over to elizabeth during the nuptials and then uh it's and also the uh country house and 17 adjacent villages which is a pretty good gift i would say um in 1578 fernick became the chief commander of the hungarian troops and he led them to war against the ottomans so i do want to say it seems like he was really good with battle um it seems like he really uh would go out there and do what he needed to do for his country and i sort of like when leaders they're not just standing behind like sending other people but they're involved so um so yeah so it seems like that's like an admirable thing about him i would say uh so anyway so he became the chief commander so while her husband was away at war um elizabeth was left at home so she had to manage all the business affairs and all the estates and she had you know a lot of like new responsibilities including like um the responsibility for the hungarian uh and Slo and Slo slovak people and um that included medical care and things like that so during the long war, which went from 1593 to 1606, Elizabeth was in charge of defending her husband's estates, which were en route to Vienna. So the threat was significant as the village of Sechte had previously been plum plundered by the Ottomans. In Sarvar, the danger was even greater. This was near the border that divided, divided royal Hungary and the Ottoman-occupied Hungary. Um, Elizabeth did intervene on behalf of destitute women, which included a woman whose husband was captured by the Ottomans and a woman whose daughter was trapped and impregnated. That's just fucked up. Um, so this is all to say basically that she seemed like a great leader and took care of the important things. Um, early on in her life, right away, she seemed like she was a really great leader. Uh, Elizabeth had a daughter in 1585 whom she named Anna Nad Nadasti. Um, she also had Orsolia Nadasti, Caitlin, Kat Catalin Nadasti, Andras Nadasti, and Paul Nadasti. Uh, some say that the couple had another son named Miklos Nadasti, but it can't be confirmed and he's not named in Elizabeth's will. Uh, you know, the rich and their wills. Ooh, I just dropped my paper. Okay. So, Georgie. Nadasti is also supposedly another child of the couple, uh, a dead infant, but again, it cannot be confirmed. Um, so all the children were cared for by the governess, which was the norm, you know, like nannies would raise the kids because she's got shit to do. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that was the norm. And uh, it was also the way that Elizabeth had been raised. So this was just what was known. 
Um, so Fernick actually died on January 4th, 1604. He was 48 years old. He had an illness that seemed to lead to his death and it actually started in 1601 and initially caused debilitating pain in his legs and left him permanently disabled in 1603. But it is unknown what that illness actually was. So he and Elizabeth had been married for 29 years years at that point but um before he passed away he entrusted his heirs and his widow to georgie thurzo so he would eventually be the one who leads the investigation into bathory's crimes so he's important um which also like think about what he has to gain i would say you know uh since he's in charge of of for Nick's for Nick's um heirs like and then he's the one that's gonna check into them it seems a little bit like what's the motive I would say um but anyway so uh people started to talk about Elizabeth and that she had these sadistic activities that she would participate in and they would just spread that gossip around um they would say that she enjoyed torturing and killing young girls um it was said that it started with servants at her castle and the and the daughters of the local peasants and then it was said that eventually she ran out of girls so then she started using girls that were sent to her by local gentry families because um they were supposed to come to her uh, to her kingdom and learn good manners and so it was said that when she ran out of girls she would take those um, the rumor was that she believed that drinking the blood of young girls would preserve her youthfulness and preserve her good looks. Um, there were witnesses and they would tell others that she would stab her victims, bite their breasts, bite their hands, faces, and arms, that she would cut them with scissors, that she would stick needles into their lips or burn them with red hot irons coins or keys um they said that some were beaten to death and that some were starved to death some of the torture included jamming pins and needles under the fingernails of her servant girls uh tying them down smearing them with honey and leaving them to be attacked by bees and ants um the theory that she would bathe in her blood seems to have been something that was added later on and not true because that that's what they would say that she would take a bath in the blood um so then there was some rumors that said when he was alive that her husband also participated in the torture but that he would restrain her like he participated but he kind of kept her in check was kind of what they would say and then they said that once he died, the torture became much worse. And so that's why they said, like, he kind of kept her under control. Um, this is all hearsay, again, um, from the people at the time. So uh, there's this other article that said this, quote, With the help of her former nurse, uh, Il 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 Ilona Ju, a local witch, Dorada Sentes, um, it said, uh it says so it says that sorry it's because the names are crazy uh so bathory began abducting peasant girls to torture and kill she often bit chunks of flesh from her victims and one unfortunate girl was even forced to cook and eat her own flesh um bathory report reportedly believed that human blood would keep her looking young and healthy um i think i don't know it seems like a bit of an embellishment, but I did want to include it because, uh, you know, this is the type of gossip that was spread around the kingdom, and obviously it's, like, so crazy that, it, it, like, it wouldn't, it's obviously something so big, like, it's not something that would be easily forgotten, and I would think that because of that, it's one of the, like, big reasons why we still hear about this case like you know hundreds of years later um because you it is still something that comes up here and there believe it or not um i've heard of this case many times um i believe actually 
I could be totally wrong, uh, but I think that the um, American Horror Story, I think it was the Coven season um, with Kathy Bates says character i think she was based off of elizabeth bathory but i cannot remember if that's true so don't quote me on that um so you could look that up if you if you want to but anyway um so yeah so let me get back to the facts um okay so like i said so uh Fernick, he died in 1604 and rumors of atrocity being committed in the castle of sester began to spread throughout royal hungary shortly after <clears throat> so between 1602 and 1604, Lutheran minister Istvan Magyari made complaints against her pub publicly, but also at the court in Vienna. So this is when things start to get like serious. Um, a long while later, which also think about the timing because now husband is gone, she's in charge, and right away now we have these wild accusations coming out in court. Okay, so a long while later, in 1610, King Matthias II assigned the Palatine of Hungary, a Georgi Thurzo, to investigate and collect evidence against the Hungarian countess. By October 1610, Thurzo and his two notaries, Andras Karasturi and Moses Siraki, had collected dozens of witness statements describing Bathory's atroc atrocities. So they had 52 witness statements, and by 1611, they had more than 300 witness statements. So that, that's a lot of people. And uh, Okay, whatever. So in the official testimony, it says that um, the first victims of Elizabeth were the girls that were, that were girls that were 10 to 14 years old. And um, it is said that she also did, in fact, began killing, begin killing daughters of the lesser gentry. Um, so remember, I mentioned that earlier. So these girls, they were sent to her... Okay, so again, this is where things get hard. They were sent to her gymnasium by her, their parents to learn courtly etiquette. So I was like, what the hell is that word, gymnasium? I think that's how you pronounce it. So that means part of the house reserved for the women. Uh, so literally, over belonging to women feminine. So, um, yeah. I had to Google that and I had to put it in there because I'm like, I don't know what that is. Um, okay, so the testimonies confirmed that there were abductions. Um, the torture was consistently severe beatings, burning or mutilations of hands, biting of flesh off the faces, arms and other body parts, freezing or starving to death. In court, it was also said needles were used and that they were uh, more suspected forms of torture carried out by Elizabeth. In the Budapest city archives, it said that girls were burned with hot tongs and then placed in freezing cold water. Um, they were covered in honey and then live ants and that uh, they were sus suspect they were um, subjected, I guess, to um, cannibalism. Uh, there were many witnesses who testified at court that they witnessed the countess torture and kill young servant girls. Um, so that was like basically the testimonies that that's what was said in court um what i had said before were like rumors this was actually put into court so on december 12th 1610 nicola the sixth Zer Zer zrinsky confirmed the agreement with thurzo about the imprisonments of elizabeth and the distribution of the estate um, on December 30th, 1610, Thurzo went to Sechte Castle and arrested Elizabeth along with four of her servants that were accused of being her accomplices. Um, Thurzo wrote a letter to his wife which described the arrest of Elizabeth and he says his unannounced visit found one dead girl and another living prey, a living prey girl in the castle. And this was all a lie that did not happen. Um, Elizabeth was actually having dinner when this happened, but then... Um, so, and but like Thurzo, he would just, he would lie. And then he said also, like the first time he told the story, he told people that he had caught her in the act red-handed, which is why that false rumor is popular. So, you know, he was just spreading around this um, crazy rumor to try to 
I don't know, but get his 15 minutes of fame. I think also, like I said, think about who he is. Think about the timing. They want her out. Uh, Hold on, sorry. I have to yawn. <sighs> sorry. Um, so, yeah, so for him to say, oh, I caught her in the act is like another kind of like official thing. Like, like the testimonies, they could have been lies, but they were set in court, which makes them true. And so when, if he says that when he arrived, he caught her in the act, then that kind of becomes truth too. Um, if you, if you get what I mean. So anyway. Um, Elizabeth's son and two of her son-in-laws debated with Thurzo because they did not want a trial and an execution. So they wanted to avoid all of that. Um, so that, uh, they wanted to avoid also like, ooh, they, they wanted to avoid like the consequences of what a trial and execution would mean for their family so basically um they were because they were an influential family so they didn't want a public scandal um they didn't want to be disgraced so all of elizabeth's real estate uh, would be seized by the crown uh thurzo paul and her two son-in-laws originally planned for bathory to be taken away to a nunnery but as the accounts of her murder of the murder of the daughters of lesser noble tree spread nobility spread, it was agreed that she would be kept under strict house arrest and that further punishment should be avoided. So that was the deal that they came up with. Um, some of these testimonies, like I said, should be taken with a grain of salt because um, most of these witnesses actually testified that they heard the accusations from others and that they did not see it themselves so again that's nowadays what is that called hearsay um would not be admissible in court but this was a different time different place um the servants confess under torture um which is also not a credible source obviously you can't you can't torture somebody and then take what they say to be fact because they said what they said because they're being tortured so um again another um reason why not to believe all of this uh so yeah so all of the accusations were based on rumor the testimony was based on rumors and basically her what would it be her punishment was also just based off some rumors there's no document to prove that anyone in the area complained about the countess uh there's no paper proof of any of this um so during this time, it said, like, if somebody was harmed or somebody did, like, for any little thing, like, even if somebody stole a chicken, a letter of complaint was written. So, there, sh if she was doing something wrong, especially something so crazy, there should have been some type of written complaint. There would be some, some type of written uh, receipt of, like, what's going on, some proof. Um, so, okay, so then, anyway, so there was two trials that were had held in the wake of Bathory's arrest. Um, the first was held on January 2nd, 1611. And then 11. And then the second was on January 7th, 1611. So um, on January 25th, 1611, Thurzo wrote in a letter to Hungarian Prince Matthias. I cannot talk Hungarian to the... Con oh my God. Thurzo wrote in a letter to Hungarian King Matthias regarding the capture of the Countess Elizabeth Bathory and her confinement in the castle. So he let him know. Um, and then he also coordinated the steps of the investigation and dealt with the political struggle. So as I said, who kind of became in charge? Thurzo. So, I don't know. Elizabeth was detained in the castle for the rest of her life. Uh, she did die at the age of 54, still being detained in that castle. Uh, Thurzo wrote that Elizabeth Bathory was locked in a bricked room. Um, but then it says, according to other sources, uh, it says written documents from the visit of priests in July 1614. They said that she was able to move freely and unhindered in the castle. Um, so basically, she was just under house arrest. Um, so she wrote a will 
in September 1610, in which she left all her current and future inheritance uh, possessions to her children. In the last month of 1614, she signed her arraignment, arrangement in which she distributed the estates, lands, and possessions among her children. On the evening of August 20th, 1614, Bathory complained to her bodyguard that her hands were cold. He replied, quote, it's nothing, mistress, just go lie down. Don't get me started on women and healthcare and being told it's nothing, don't worry about it. So anyway, so she went to sleep and was found dead uh, the following morning. Um, so she was buried in the church of Sestjet uh, on November 25th, 1614. Um, apparently though some villagers were actually upset about having her buried there in their cemetery so they had to have her body moved um, to her birth home um, at uh, is, is it, is it? I don't know how to pronounce that and put in the Bathory family crypt so today the location of the body is unknown um, the church or the castle do not bear any markings of her possible grave um, so I'm sure there has to be somebody, there has to be some official something that says where she's at. But anyway, that's basically the main story of her life. But as I said, some people argue that it's all a lie. Um, right here I put an author named Laszlo Nagy and Dr. Irma Sadeski Cardos have argued that Elizabeth Bathory was a victim of a conspiracy. Nagy argued that the proceedings against Bathory were largely politically motivated, possibly due to her extensive wealth and ownership of large areas of land in Hungary, escalating after the death of her husband. The theory is consistent with Hungarian history at the time, which included religious and political conflicts, especially relating to the wars with the Ottoman Empire, the spread of Prot Protestantism, and the extension of Habsburg power over Hungary. So also, another thing, apparently Matthias owed a large debt to Bathory, which was canceled after she was arrested. So remember, Matthias was the one that assigned uh, Thurzo to be in charge of the investigation. Um, so now, magically, she's found guilty. He doesn't owe her a debt anymore. Um, so that's definitely suspicious. Um... But then, of course, so there's counter arguments to this, of course. So uh, it says the investigation into Bathory's, Bathory's crimes were started because of complaints from a Lutheran minister, Itzvan Majjari, which I mentioned him earlier. Um, so this doesn't, this doesn't explain the plot of the Catholic Habsburg going against Protestant Elizabeth. But religious tension is still a possible source of conflict because she was actually raised Calvinist and not Lutheran. That was a big deal. So... Um, but yeah, there's no way to prove her innocence now, obviously, because uh, we would have to address all the witness testimonies and then also the physical evidence. And obviously that happened so long ago that doesn't, the people are dead now and that doesn't exist. So, you know, I guess it's one of those things where we're not really going to know, but it all seems like a plot to me. Um, these two authors that I mentioned also, they argue that the physical evidence was exaggerated and that Thurzo misrepresented dead and wounded patients as victim of victims of Elizabeth because if he disgraced her he would greatly benefit his political state ambitions like I said so during the 18th and 19th centuries many stories spread the most popular story is that she would bathe in her victim's blood to remain young and beautiful as I said earlier um, in 1972 Laszlo Turoz Turozzi wrote Tragica Historia which is the first written account of this case and in it he put the bathing in blood myth so again this is how fake news and stuff gets like perpetuate like it it becomes almost fact because everybody says it it's known but it starts with somebody putting it somewhere and then it just spreads so this guy just for whatever reason chose to um <coughs> say that i guess to make his book more popular i don't know um, it wasn't until 1817 when the witness accounts were published for the first time. Those witness, account witness accounts had been found in 1765, but they were not published until 1817, um, for whatever reason. 
those accounts did not mention anything about bloodbaths. Um, John Paget wrote Hungary and Transylvania in 1815, and he explains where the origins of the myth came from. But it seems his book is a fictionalized version of the oral history from the area, so it is very hard to determine his accuracy. It is considered that the movie for Elizabeth Crime, Elizabeth's Crimes was most... Oh my god, did I say movie? I did. It is considered that the motive for Elizabeth's Crimes was most likely sadistic pleasure. Um, so one article said... Um, labeled by the so she was labeled by the guinness world records as the most prolific female serial killer in history um because it said that elizabeth is believed to have tortured and killed up to 650 young women between 1590 and 1610 her bloodthirsty activities have led many to cite nicknames that include the blood countess and countess dracula um so yeah that's the case of elizabeth Bathory and I feel like you know what whether it was true or not I feel like she was the victim of sexism period I wonder like uh, I'm wheezing I'm sorry I wonder if there will ever be any like official documents that surface up or um you know any more concrete evidence and theories and stuff instead of all these rumors um I think it's pretty clear that people didn't want her there because they wanted things for themselves i think she was a great leader but um the people at the time i don't think they were ready for it she was a great female leader um she looked out for other females i don't think men like that of course men were more important in that time i think that it was a plot i think that thurzo and king matthias sort of got together and decided to plot together because it would both greatly benefit from her um not uh being in uh what is the word to not be crowned like to not be in charge whatever the phrasing is so um i would say yeah uh, uh it was a conspiracy in my eyes but i would love to know what you guys think um what you guys do you guys think she actually did torture and kill these young women did she not do anything at all and it's just all one big conspiracy or did she do some other weird things and people just said that um i don't know tell me tell me what you think so um you could send me so i have my twitter handle is crime castle pod uh also on here i think it's crime castle you could send me an email as well if you want to at crimecastlepod at gmail.com or I guess you could leave a comment, what is it, down below? Comment, subscribe, whatever. Um, so thanks for listening. Um, this was my first video. It's not the greatest, um, but it's all right. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed the story at least and I'll be back with more. I also did the same story uh on my podcast which you could check out if you want to it's crime castle um you could there's my dog you could probably find uh you could find it like on whatever you listen to um it's on like all you know apple podcasts and spotify and whatever um or you could just watch it here whatever you want i won't tell you what to do anyway thanks for listening and goodbye